Hi everybody, welcome to lecture 25, Biography of the Earth. So this is going to be a pretty short, and I promise it's going to be a pretty short lecture because I found um, two really great PBS videos on um, Earth history, and I don't want to take away from those. I'd rather you watch those than this. Um, so this is really just a summary of bullet points on the history of the Earth. Um, a lot of stuff we actually already talked about, so it's really just looking at things um, and putting them in uh, sequential order. So with that, I have a really fun website that I wanted to show you, um, and I have that here built into the PowerPoint, so this is where that link will take you. Um, and since it's Earth History Week, um, this website's really cool because you can put in any address and look at the history of it through, it goes back uh, 750 million years ago. So not quite the beginning of time, but a pretty um, significant part of time. So let me just, I'll, I'll show you where I live. I live near Coventry Lake, Connecticut. So it's going to pin me there. And I can zoom in. And then look at, let's go back to 750, what it looked like, oh, if you heard that, that was my laundry, it's ready. Um, and you can see where you are from or any other location in the world um, through time. And if you just keep pressing the arrow going this way, and it has it somewhere on here, use the um, back, and, back and forth arrows to go through time so you can see how the earth changes whatever address you input into this, which is really neat. So you can go through and, and see how your home, your school, your job, whatever, change through time. So it's really cool. So I wanted to show you that all. Okay, so let's get into the lecture. Again, this is going to be super quick. Um, slideshow, play from... Sorry. Okay, so lecture 25. Okay, awesome websites. Go play with these. Oops. Okay, so we talked about the geologic time scale a, a bunch, and we know about the different eons, um, the Hadean, the Archean, Proterozoic, Phanerozoic, and we all know that much of life that we know, so humans, mammals, dinosaurs, even fish, um, a lot of these happened in this Phanerozoic eon. The Hadean, the Arche Archean, and much of the Proterozoic did not have um, a ton of life on it that we know today. So these are really um, primitive types of organisms, um, ocean type of organisms when you get into the Proterozoic, late in the Proterozoic. Um, but a lot of life that we know on this earth, plants, animals, um, really happen in this really tiny chunk of time. So as you know from the geologic time activity, it took a huge amount of time in Earth's history to get to the point where we are today and to um, have all of those animals, plants that we know of through time are really going to be concentrated right in this eon. So this diagram is a good uh, synopsis summary of Earth history, right? We have our four eons, and then it gives you some bullet points of the main events that are happening in each eon. So we have the formation of the Earth, the, the first bacteria, the oldest rocks happen in the Archean. Um, we start to get oxygen accumulating in the atmosphere. Um, in the late Proterozoic, we have our first multicellular organisms in the Proterozoic. Um, and then we finally get life in the Phanerozoic. Because there's so many different types of life in evolution in the Phanerozoic, we typically talk about that in eras. So again, here are the four eons with the biggest chunks of time broken up into four sections. And then you can see the Phanerozoic is broken up into eras. So typically when we look at the geologic time scale, we have the, the three eras, Cenozoic, Mesozoic, and Paleozoic. And then all three of these eons can fit nicely into our fourth era, which is the Precambrian era. And this is what our geologic time scale looks like. So you can see Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic, and then Precambrian is all of this stuff in here. Okay, so 
that's the gist. That is the big bullet points of all of the uh, major events that are happening um, in Earth history. So I have this time scale here on, this, on these lecture slides kind of pointing where each of these um, events and activities are happening on the geologic time scale. Okay, so I'm not going to go too into this because, again, um, there's videos that are much better than my lectures. Um, and we already talked about a lot of this stuff. It's just kind of tying loose ends and pulling it all together. So we have the Hadeon Eon, which is Hadean hell-like. Um, this is a very primitive earth, very hot, lots of volcanic activity. Um, differentiation has not happened yet, but it is starting to happen. We have a collision with a Mars-like uh, protoplanet producing our moon 4.5 billion years ago. So again, this is all review. Okay, we have the Archean Aeon, still in the, um, the next Aeon, which is about 4 to 2.5 billion years ago. Okay, and this is when plate tectonics is starting to happen, okay? And that happens about um, between 4 and 3 billion years ago, we start to get plate tectonics. Okay, so again, we have differentiation, the earth is cooling, um, the layers are differentiating, and then we finally get some plate tectonic activity, right? So earth is not just one big solid block of rock, right? We're starting to get our plates and we're starting to get our tectonic activity, which is one of the reasons why earth is so unique, right? We have this idea of uh, plate tectonics, okay? So that's happening starting in the Ar Archean, okay? So it takes about a billion years for that to even start to happen on earth. Okay, so four, four billion years ago, extensive volcanism, Earth is cooling, um, it's still very hot, it's a very hot planet, um, it's still uh, pretty terrible conditions, you do not want to be on this planet, and what do I have over here, something like that, and we start to get water, okay, so as the Earth cools, and I think the next slide, oops, okay, so, sorry, I'm moving my face all around, we start to get the origin of the Earth's oceans, Okay, so Earth's surface finally cooled to a temperature below the point of boiling water, um, so we start to get an accumulation of water on Earth. Okay, so our oceans are starting. And again, that is about four, four billion years ago. 3.5 billion years ago, we start to get, um, our plate tectonics are moving now, we're starting to get uh, tectonic activity, and now we finally get the formation of the continents. Okay, so again, that happens um, very, very slowly over time. So remember, when Earth first started um, and started to cool, the crust um, was all mafic rock. It was all basically mantle-sourced material, um, very uh, mafic in composition. But as plate tectonics began, um, we started to get fractional crystallization. We started to get assimilation. Um, we started to get partial melting, and then we very, very slowly over many millions of years started to get our continental crust. So we first start to get the formation of granite. Okay, so it took um, about two billion years, or excuse me, a billion years before we start to get granite and continental crust. Okay, so it's a very slow process of plate tectonics. Okay, and when we get granite, we start to get our continental crust, right? So before it was all oceans, all mafic. Um, basically, you have your oceanic crust underneath our oceans, right? So no land. But as we started to build up granite, as we started to accumulate that more felsic material, we started to create our continents. Okay, and so those continents grew um, from little, really small, tiny land masses to the big continents that we know today. Okay, and creating those continents um, created some really shallow um, marine waters, right? And this is where we start to get our stromatolites. So this is um, a pretty big game changer as far as Earth's history goes. Um, stromatolites are these algal mats that, are, that grow in shallow water, and they are still growing in shallow water today. Um, and they created oxygen for the Earth. Okay, so they released... Um, oxygen into the atmosphere, um, whereas before stromatolites there was only nitrogen and carbon dioxide, so there was no free oxygen in the atmosphere. So these algal mats, these really primitive um, beings, 
created oxygen for us. So we are basically here thanks to our stromatolite friends. Okay, so um, if you ever go get to go visit a stromatolite, um, a living stromatolite, you can thank it for giving us life on this planet. Okay, 3.5 to 1.5 billion years ago, the iron is removed from the ocean. As it oxida oxidizes, we get these really beautiful banded iron formations that you'll see in some rocks. Um, there's these really beautiful red and orange colors. Um, this is when the... Um, about 3.5 to 1.5 billion years ago where the iron was being removed from oceans. Okay, so these really beautiful red rocks are the product of that. Okay, so then we get to our Proterozoic Eon. So we talked about the Hadean, the Archean, now we're in the Proterozoic. Okay, and so this is early life. Okay, so really primitive beings, but we're starting to get some different types of organisms. Okay, and we're also accumulating more continents. Okay, so you can see the different colors representing the, the different eons. So the Archean cratons, when we first started to build our continents, are really just these little tiny blips of red. Okay, so not a lot of land mass in the Archean. But as we keep getting more fractional crystallization and assimilation, uh, partial melting, all of that stuff that gives us felsic material, um, and we get more continents smashing into each other, we get subduction zones, creating our felsic material, we start to grow more and more landmass. So you can see that you get more landmass um, the more you go into geologic time. So it first starts off with little blips in the Archean, uh, they're growing more in the Proterozoic, and then in the Phanerozoic we finally get the continents that we know today. Okay, so these continents grew over billions of years to where they are today that we know in their current orientation. Okay, so it takes us to our blue planet where we have all of our oceans and we have our landmass that we see today. The continents obviously look different around this time, but we're um, starting to get that very familiar look of Earth that we know today. Okay, and this is a really helpful uh, summary of how the land masses grew. And now remember, um, we have a few rounds of supercontinents. So the one that we all know and love is our very last supercontinent, and this is Pangaea, about 300 million years ago, or 300 yeah, million years ago. But when we first started growing these continents, these land masses, Earth was just ocean. Right, and then three billion years ago, we finally get a little blip of land. Okay, this is our first continent. Okay, and they all have names. Okay, and then again, we get some more continent growth, more here 2.7 billion years ago, um, and then we keep growing landmass. Now, while this landmass is growing, continents are smashing into each other, breaking apart, doing all that kind of stuff that we know that they like to do. Okay, so continents are growing, but they're also reorganizing themselves. Okay, so another uh, supercontinent that we know of is uh, called Rodinia, and that was about one billion years ago. So probably our two um, most famous supercontinents um, are these two, Rodinia and Pangaea. These were our um, really two um, big supercontinents that we had on Earth. But there's been a couple of other organizations of the continents. So this is a helpful diagram. Okay, so we're still in the Proterozoic Eon. So we're, we have life, but it's all um, really simple organisms. So think jellyfish, um, worms, type, type of organisms, um, all really oceanic um, types of organisms. So we don't have anything on land at this point. Um, towards the end of the Proterozoic Eon, we get this uh, snowball earth that happened, and this really changed things for us on Earth. Okay, and I'm going to explain um, snowball earth. Oops. So Ediacaran, Ediacaran fauna is our jellyfish, um, our Proterozoic types of organisms. Okay, so about... 0.7 billion years ago, we, we get Snowball Earth. And Snowball Earth, I can't find a good place to put my head, is um, when we, when Earth was basically a giant snowball. And what's interesting about Snowball Earth is that scientists still today debate on how we got 
uh, uh, basically a giant snowball as Earth um, 0.7 billion years ago. How did it happen? Um, and why did it happen? Be um, a lot of the reasons why we don't know this is because geologists often look uh, towards our present to figure out our past so and vice versa so we see the things that are happening on earth presently and we can connect them to our past um, and vice versa when we look at the rock record and we see things that have happened in the past um, sometimes we can use that to predict what's going to happen in in the future um, so it's this nice cycle um, looking at the rock record and looking at current active processes but with Snowball Earth, there really wasn't anything quite like it, and there hasn't really been anything quite like it since. So it's really hard to find a really good explanation as to why it happened um, and how it happened. And there's been a couple of different uh, hypotheses as to why it happened. Um, one of them is this idea that the continents were breaking up. So we have massive continent reorganization. As we know, when we have divergent plates, we get a lot of volcanic activity. Okay, so that volcanic activity releases gases into the atmosphere, such as carbon dioxide, and that will give us a really short-term global warming event. But as this lava begins to weather and erode, um, it takes away all of that um, carbon dioxide that was being released into the atmosphere and the climate plunges significantly, creating a snowball earth effect. Um, this is also demonstrated in this diagram where we had um, volcanic outgassing, the polar caps are growing, and then the lower re reflectivity causes further cooling. So now you're speeding up this snowball earth process. Okay, so at one point in time, 0.7 billion years ago, our earth was basically a giant snowball. But what's even cooler about um, Snowball Earth, and I have a couple articles built into the PowerPoint, um, if you look in the notes that explore why this happened in a further detail, I'm not going to get into it. Um, but what's cool about Snowball Earth is that because there were so many glaciers on our planet at this point in time, when, when the Earth finally decided to thaw, um, all of those glaciers scraped up all of that continental crust that they were sitting on. And when the glaciers scraped up that continental crust, it released all of this phosphorus that is naturally in rock, as such as continental crust, and it actually fed um, organisms in the ocean this nice, um, basically life-forming mineral, which is phosphorus, and created this explosion of life right at the end of the Phanerozoic called the Cambrian Explosion. Okay, so right at the end of this Phanerozoic, we get this huge increase of life caused by the snowball earth um, introducing all of this phosphorus into our environment, into our oceans, um, because it scraped off all that material from the continents um, as these glaciers were formed. Okay, so that's really cool. So, Snowball Earth, Cambrian Explosion. So now we go from uh, multi, uh, pretty basic types of marine animals such as jellyfish, worms, um, etc. to now we start to get hard-bodied organisms in the ocean. So still, everything's in the ocean um, still, but now we're getting more complex life. So animals with hard parts, shells, um, different types of organisms begin to happen um, post snowball earth. So Phanerozoic is our last eon and it um, is basically the eon of life. Okay, so visible life. So when we look at our three eras in the Phanerozoic, we have Cenozoic, Mesozoic, Paleozoic. Okay, so Paleozoic is ancient life, Mesozoic is middle, and Cenozoic is recent life. So I'm just going to briefly go through each of these, starting with the Paleozoic. Now we're at this um, bar in our Earth history. Um, early Paleozoic. Yeah, early Paleozoic, we have abundant marine organisms. So these are our hard shells, corals, crinoids, trilobites, um, nautiloids. They look like little squid, octopus type things. Middle Paleozoic, we start to get fish. So this is called the age of the fishes. We start to get coral reefs. Um, we start to get primitive land plants. So ferns are starting to form in the Paleozoic and we get our first insects. 
And then in late Paleozoic, we get our evergreen trees, amphibians, early reptiles, and then we have the breakup of Pangaea, which is in the late Paleozoic, which doesn't have anything to do with life, but it is a big event. So I'm not going to actually go through this because it's, whoops, you can do that on your own time. Um, and it's really just basically going over everything I just said, but in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we have the fish, the age of the fishes that are happening. We start to get life on land. Um, so we have enough oxygen in the atmosphere um, comparable to today, about 400 million years ago. Our ozone layer is formed to protect the continents from cosmic rays. So this is when we start to um, produce our nice ozone layer, which is very helpful to us as humans. Um, in the Devonian, so this is late Paleozoic, we start to finally get animals that are transitioning from water um, to land. And it starts with this kind of fish amphibian weird looking thing called Tiktaalik. Um, and he was one of the first um, land transitioning animals that we have. Um, it can breathe um, outside of the water. So it had the um, first evolved lungs. It started to get wrists. Um, and this is really what started the transition from ocean to land. Okay, and then in the late Paleozoic, um, we have the uh, formation of Pangaea. So again, this is our last supercontinent um, that we have on Earth. Okay, and then the late Paleozoic ends with a really huge extinction event. Um, as to why this extinction event happened, um, it's probably related to a big lava flow that erupted in Siberia. It has an, uh, increased atmospheric dust, increased acidic atmosphere, um, gases, um, and it disrupts the food chain. So all of our really um, abundant ocean life organisms were pretty much wiped out at the late Paleozoic. Okay, so this is our PT extinction event. Okay, and then at the end, so this... PT event really wipes out a lot of our marine organisms. So over 95% of marine species disappeared during this time. And then this starts the age of the reptiles. So the Mesozoic era is the age of our dinosaurs, big reptiles, um, T-Rex, etc. And that uh, extinction event is the boundary between the age of the ocean and the age of the fishes to now we have the age of the reptiles. Okay, so dinosaurs evolved over time. We have the breakup of Pangaea happening. Okay, so now our continents are or organizing themselves to what they are presently. Um, we have evolution of dinosaurs. So um, swimming reptiles evolved. The first dinosaurs, uh, first flying dinosaurs eventually evolved um, in the Jurassic. And then in the Cretaceous, um, we start to get flowering plants, grasses, and then the, our T-Rex evolves. So if you're ever confused about um, what these words mean, just um, refer back to the time scale, okay, and they'll tell you. So again, um, we're in the Mesozoic, so we're in the age of the reptiles, and it's broken up into three further periods. So we have the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. So all three of these periods are within um, the Mesozoic, Okay. Late Mesozoic, again, continents are reorganizing themselves. Okay, and then we have our last huge extinction event, which is our KT extinction event. So this is the boundary between the Cretaceous, which is K, and the Tertiary, which is T. So this is the KT extinction event. Um, and this wiped out much of our dinosaurs. 90% um, of plankton, 75% of plant species disappeared forever. And why did this happen? Most likely this happened because of a crater impact. So the Chicxulub crater uh, 65 million years ago um, impacted an area um, or in the Yucatan Peninsula um, 65 million years ago. It was 100 kilometers wide. Um, it was a tremendously huge um, impact event. Um, and you can look at the rock record as evidence of that impact event. So scientists um, use a lot of different tools to figure out where this impact um, happened and 
um, if it happened at all. So there's a couple of different methods that they use. Shocked quartz is a type of quartz that looks a certain way under a microscope. Um, and this forms under tremendous pressures. You have small glass sphericals formed from instantly melted magma. You have ash from burned plants and wood. Um, and you have clay containing iridium, which is abundant only in meteorites. Okay, so all of these um, lines of evidence together convinced scientists, which is actually a pretty recent discovery, um, as to what this boundary at 65 million years ago means um, and, ha and where did it happen and what does this say about dinosaurs. Okay, so if you do the part three of lab, um, you explore this in much more depth. Okay, and so at this boundary, so the KT extinction event now started our last era called the Cenozoic. And this is our um, age of the mammals. Okay, so this is where um, humans finally come into the picture. Okay, so we have um, giant mammals, mammoths, beavers, bears, sloths, etc. starting in the Cenozoic. Life in the Cenozoic. You have early um, Cenozoic, the start of elephants, whales, horses, bears. Um, horses did not look like they do now back in the early Cenozoic. Um, same with bears, beavers. These are all evolving to what they are today, but they looked much different in the early Cenozoic. Um, and then you have late Cenozoic, which is um, the last ice age, the northern hemisphere, mammoths, first humans, and modern organisms. Okay, and so our last um, event in the Cenozoic is uh, ape-like pri ape -like primates diversified in the Miocene, so about 20 million years ago. Um, seems like a very, very long time ago, but it's actually very, very recent. Um, and we finally get the first uh, Homo sapiens. So if you want a little recap of the correct order of events, this is a good guide. I think that's it. Um, I will post another lecture, um, the same thing, but just um, more detail. So if you want some more answers to questions, if you want some more detail on things, I will post that also. Um, but it's literally the same thing, but with just some extra slides thrown in there just for your own fun and amusement. Um, that's it. I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you all have a very good week. Signing off.